Hi, I'm Chris. I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk today about three different forms of a whole number. Now, when we talk about forms of a whole number, we're really just talking about three different ways that a whole number can be written. The first form I'll talk about is the standard form. And I'll write the number 652 in standard form. And to do that, I'm simply going to write the digit 6, followed by the digit 5, followed by the digit 2. And you can see the standard form is really nothing more than, than the accepted form or the accepted way that, that we're going to write a whole number in most cases. Usually only the digits and in the case of a larger number um, digits and commas as well. Um, standard form is the way that you're going to see a number written most of the time if you walk into a Walmart or you walk into a bank or you walk into a game store. Instead of standard form, sometimes you might see this called standard notation. It means the same thing. Another form of a whole number is the word form. And the word form is just what it sounds like. It's where I take the number and I write it out word for word just exactly as I would say it. So in the case of the number 652, I would simply write out the number 6 as a word, 600. Before we go on to the third form, I want to point out that word form can also be referred to as written form. and it can also be referred to as written notation. All right, the third form of a whole number that I'm going to talk about is the expanded form. Now just think for just a moment about this word expanded and what that word means. Okay? If we expand something, we cause it to grow or to get larger. Now, in this particular case, the word expanded does not mean we're going to increase the value of the number. But what we're going to do is take that number written in standard form and we're going to expand it out. We're going to expand the way that it's written so that it looks larger on paper in most cases than the other forms. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll continue to work with the number 652 and I'll write it first in standard form and then we'll convert that standard form into the expanded form okay. and to do that I'm going to go to the highest place in this case the digit in the highest place is a 6 now this 6 when it's located in this place the value of that 6 is not 6 it's 600. So we'll come over here and we're going to write 600. And now we're going to go to the next digit in the next highest place and that's the 5. And the 5 when it's in this place, in the tens place, its value is not 5, it's 50. So we're going to add 50 to the 600. And then finally we'll go to the next place which is the 2, which is in the 1's place. And in this case, because the 2 is in the 1's place, it actually, its value actually is 2. So 652 written in expanded form is 600 plus 50 plus 2. Now there are a couple of variations on expanded form that you might also run into. Um, sometimes your teacher might expect you to um, write a number like this in expanded form this way. Um, they might expect you to take the 600 and write it inside inside parentheses as 6 times 100 and then we're going to add that 
to 5 times 10. This 5 times 10 representing 50. Plus 2. Or they might even have you write 2 as 2 times 1 and then also put that inside parentheses. One other variation that you might run into is you might have to use exponential notation. And to do that, um, I would simply take this 6 times 100 and I'd go one further step with that. I'll write that as 6 times 10 to the power of 2. And I can quickly figure that it's the power of 2 because I've got two zeros in 100, so I'd raise um, my 10 to the power of 2. I would write 5 times 10 as 5 times 10 to the power of 0. Uh, I'll correct that. That would be 10 to the power of 1. And the way I know that it's 1, or a quick way to, to know that it would be 10 to the power of 1, is I have 1, 0, and 10. So I raise my 10 here to the first power, to the power of 1. And then finally, I can write my 2 as 2 times 10 to the power of 0. The power of 0, I can quickly figure because 1 has no zeros in it at all. So 10 in this case would be raised to the zero power. Um, I'll put a link over here on the side to a video that I did, a tutorial that I did on powers of 10 that I think might help you to understand this last variation of expanded form. So make sure that if you're working an assignment that calls for expanded form that you find out from your teacher which of these three different versions of expanded form that, that he or she expects you to use. Zelda just asked me a very good question. She asked, can expanded form also be called expanded notation in the same way that standard form can also be referred to as standard notation? And the answer to that is absolutely yes it can. So let's go ahead and let's put that over here to the side. Expanded form can also be referred to as expanded notation. And Zelda, thank you for calling that to my attention. Well, I hope this video on, on these three forms of a whole number, the standard form, the word form, and the expanded form, has been helpful to you. One of the things that you're soon going to be expected to know how to do is how to take a number written in one form and then convert it to another form. For example, you might be given a number in expanded form and then you have to convert that into the standard form. And I'm going to be making several different tutorials on how to do that. And we'll also go into more depth and more detail on each of these forms in those videos. But I'll put a link page up here in just a moment. And as I complete those videos, I'll add links to them on that page. Um, and then I hope you can um, stay around and watch the cartoon and enjoy the music at the end of the video. Uh, thanks for coming by.